Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. In the war in Ukraine, both sides have deployed armies of lethal drones against each other. Some sophisticated, others, like this one, adapted by hand to drop grenades on enemy positions. There's usually a human that decides where and when a drone strikes. Does anyone ever have... I don't know if I've ever, like, gotten crapped on by a bird. But, I mean, come on, just by numbers, one of you... One, imagine that, but instead of bird crap, it's a grenade. That's terrifying. Likes. Uh, my name's Connor. Hello. Original link to the video. Top of the description. Preemptive like. Uh, below that, link to the Discord. Click on it. Click on the link. It'll send you right over there. Would love to have you uh, in the Minecraft stuff if you're interested in that. Also, info over there. Started playing the past few weeks. If that interests you. Okay. Yeah, great channel. I really do. Business Insiders. Awesome. The true cost of killer drones. Hope you're all doing... How, how are you? Good? Great. Good. But some are capable of operating in fully autonomous mode, meaning the drone can be programmed to make the call between life and death on its own. But what if the tech fails? And what if it falls into the wrong hands? The war we're seeing right now is only going to kind of accelerate this move toward autonomous, lethal autonomy. That was cool. To kind of accelerate this move toward autonomous, lethal autonomous weapons on the battlefield. But are we ready for killer robots? And what would be the true cost yes. of taking human hands off the trigger? Three, three, two, one. These are what's known as loitering munitions. They can fly around waiting for a target to be identified before crashing to the ground to destroy it. So it's really a combination of an artillery and a drone that has uh, got the capabilities of both. John Aldana manages the loitering. I thought munitions program. Missiles like this, the Switchblade 300. The company has been producing missiles. The wings are so flat. I need to learn about aerodynamics. I, it's interesting. I thought there has to be like a curve. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I was. I remember it was a vi a YouTube video. It was short, uh, like Elon Musk talking about drones, and how, like, it, it soon. So basically, and we just saw it right there. So in, in the near future, if you're a really wanted person around the world, by you're wanted by a country who has these things. Um, obviously saying wanted de depends on whether the country that wants you that is trying to get you has the capability here um but that if you're like depending on how wanted you are you're just going to have a bunch of robots flying around with the purpose of like with face technology there's all, already super good face technology like in our phones and whatever the public has the military has to be like a decade or two better i would assume right um and so they're just you're never going to be able to leave. Like, you're, they're just going to be these robots, no feelings, doesn't get tired, just looking to face scan you and then just ram in and, and detonate. Uh, that's, that's crazy. ...like this, the Switchblade 300, and this, the largest 600, for over two decades. They actually fold up, like so, and are inside a launch tube that's just a little bit larger than this. It launches the switchblade out. The wings open up like that, which is why we call it a switchblade. The propellers here, because of the air, will start to spin, and the battery, which is inside, kicks in. Guys, what if they do? Do they have this on like Air Force One? What if, in, like, like you? It'll be like an aircraft carrier in the air. You're like you know how an aircraft carrier, like. I think there are some weapons on an aircraft carrier, like some big machine guns, maybe. But the big weapon and defense of an aircraft carrier is the planes themselves, right? And so, you, what if you just get, like, a big plane flying with, like, no weapons on it, but just a bunch of holes in the side of it that have these tubes in them that whenever they want to attack or defend, 
they just deploy and shoot out a bunch of these drones to, to circle and protect the plane at any cost because they're robots. That, that they should do it. I'm sure they... The wings open up like that, which it, is why it'd be we like call an it air, aircraft The propellers power. here, because of the air, will start to spin and the battery, which is inside, kicks in and it's off. The 300 can loiter for around 15 minutes and is designed to take out small targets like enemy soldiers and trucks, while the larger 600 can wait around for up to 40 minutes and attack armored vehicles. Operators can control the switchblades from as far as 40 kilometers away. You have the ability to wave off, so you can cancel the mission all the way to the very end, go back to loitering, find another target, of interest and engage a different target of interest that you may not have even known about. The United States sent 700 of these to and, Ukraine. And uh, w on an airplane, obviously you wouldn't need any, any projection force to get it up in the air. You're already in the air. So you, you just have to have it like drop out of the bottom or something. In early 2022, Ukrainian forces have already shared videos. I, I gotta stop talking. Sorry. Okay. All right. The United States sent 700 of these to Ukraine in early 2022. Ukrainian forces have already shared videos of what they claim to be switchblade attacks on the ground. Each switchblade 300 reportedly costs about $6,000 and can only be used once. That's more than an off-the-shelf drone rigged to carry a grenade, but far less than the cost of an unmanned aircraft like the MQ-9 Reaper, which can fly back to base once it has fired on a target. And the switchblades are being designed to think more and more for themselves. A e even on a drone, you could have just, just why, why don't you just make a cavity in the, in the body of the drone to deploy switchblade drones? The MQ-9 Reaper, which can fly back to base once it has fired on a target. And the switchblades are being designed to think more and more for themselves. Autonomous or semi-autonomous drones are going to be used to conduct these kinds of conflicts. That means tracking and recognizing a target, even one that's on the move. And we'll continue to invest heavily on autonomy and AI and machine vision algorithms and software that essentially makes these things more and more, I don't want to call it 100% autonomous, but more and more autonomous and self-thinking, call it that way. Wahid Nawabi always sees a human being kept in the loop when making judgment calls. Can you put it a different way, please? That's unsettling. But in his view, sometimes ah. it's the human that's the problem. More and more of the analytics and the burden on the soldier is going to be taken or replaced by these algorithms that make it more reliable, more accurate, and safer for the operators. One little question I have about that is, do you think that'll make it, like, yeah, it'll make it easier on the mind of the soldier, but do you think that's going to make you even more removed from your targets? And so you're just going to see them not as pe people, uh, no, well, I mean, it's war, you're trying to kill them but do you think to a certain point like it's uh, something's not right about just like oop there, there's a dot like oop button gone do you know what i mean there's just something about it is uh, morally not more you do you know what i mean ah yeah human error during drone strikes has caused a high number of civilian casualties in recent years as Kabul fell to the Taliban in 2021, a US MQ-9 Reaper drone fired a missile that killed 10 civilians, including seven children. The drone team mistook an aid worker's white Toyota for that of a potential terrorist. I remember hearing According about According to the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, the US has killed at least 300 civilians in drone strikes and covert operations in Afghanistan between 2015 and 2020. Jesus. But AI systems designed to make the tough choices easier are also getting it wrong, as we'll see later. Ukraine is one of the first major conflicts where drones have played such a high profile role. But experiments with unmanned flying missiles began over a hundred years ago. This is the Kettering Bug, an unmanned aerial torpedo designed by the US Army during World War I. 
its wings were designed to fall off before the bomb dropped to its intended target. But it wasn't until the US invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan that we saw high-tech drones like the MQ-9 Reaper and even some loitering munitions. How do they... ...and aerial torpedo designed by the US. How do they know... How does it... What mechanism release... Uh, breaks the wings so it falls on the target you want. I have so many questions about this. U.S. Army during World War One. How do you know where it's going to go? Its I wings were designed to fall off before the bomb dropped to its intended target. But it wasn't until the U.S. invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan that we saw high-tech drones like the MQ-9 Reaper and even some loitering munitions starting to make a difference on the battlefield. In 2020, the world saw the first large-scale use of drones in the Nagorno-Karabakh war between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Azerbaijan deployed Israeli-made loitering drones similar to... Is Armenia a... Because Georgia is a Christian nation, right? Ma mainly Christian. And Azerbaijan is a mostly Islamic nation. Is Armenia something in the middle? It's not related. It's just, I just, I thought of it and I wanted to ask. To the switchblade. But one of the things we're seeing in Ukraine is that drones are being used pretty effectively on both sides. When Russia invaded Ukraine, many experts predicted an easy victory for Putin's forces. But Russia miscalculated the level of Ukrainian resistance. Drones have given Ukrainian forces the ability to fuel cheap and persistent air power that brings pretty significant threats to Russian ground forces. And for a while, their ill-prepared troops were caught in a 40-mile-long convoy to the north of Kyiv. They were sitting ducks for guns and Turkish-made TB2 drones. The Ukrainian government launched an appeal to fund an army. If you had a good enough airplane, or I feel like you could do way more than... I feel like that's not the job of a drone strike. That's for a job of a more of a less precise weapon north of kiev they were sitting ducks for guns like and carpet. turkish made tb2 drones the ukrainian government launched an appeal to fund an army of drones oh well, yeah turkey's not the a service of ukraine all the simplest drones which you use to shoot nature and teams of civilian engineers have adapted large numbers of off-the-shelf drones for the battlefield some like this one can grip and release small grenades. Social media has since transformed the drone into a symbol of heroic Ukrainian resistance. Yeah. Aerial footage of strikes on Russian targets is often accompanied by rock music. The impression is of a nimble David slaying the Russian Goliath. But the reality is more nuanced. Unmanned aircraft, drones and loitering munitions certainly helped. But Russia quickly stepped up its defenses and use drones of its own. They weren't ready for it, but they are now. The Russians. Sorry, I had to pee quick. Oh, I the Russians, my hands. I think, have really come. They weren't ready for it, but they are now. The Russians, I think, have really compensated and now developed their air defenses, shot down these TB2s, and really kind of rendered uh, and, and almost neutralized that technology. To stay one step ahead, big budget militaries like the US and alliances like NATO are helicopter. continuing to innovate in the air, but also underwater and on land. That's pretty continuing awesome. Continuing to innovate. Look at that. That's like something I dreamed as a kid. That makes me sound like a psychopath. Uh, you know what I mean. That it just looks so cool. In the air, but also underwater and on land. This video from 2019 shows NATO testing submersible drones. And this is a drone swarm flying through bamboo forests in China. What about digging drones? Swarm flying through bamboo forests in China. A number of militaries around the world are already using palm-sized Hornet drones for surveillance. This ability to loiter over a target and collect intelligence and surveillance and reconnaissance is really powerful. And deploying a drone in combat is far cheaper and carries fewer risks to pilots than a manned jet. But there are fears that drone operators working
Do you think that when do you think that they feel that the pilot feels a slight jerked to the left or right if he's firing a missile on the left? Because and deploying a drone in combat is far cheaper and carries fewer risks to and maybe not. I just wondered if, if like the missile might propel it a bit forward and turn the aircraft, but it, it never mind. No, uh Pilots than a manned jet. But there are fears that drone operators working thousands of miles away from a potential target are too disconnected from reality. More computer game than real life warfare. This is what I meant. Studies nevertheless show that they can suffer from PTSD and depression just like frontline troops. But the next phase in drone warfare is promising to change the rules of engagement. Or what did he say? I've never been in the military, all right? I can't talk about PTSD. But the same amount of PTSD as a ground soldier? I, I think seeing someone get blown up right in front of you in real life is going to scar you more than... I'm not saying that... You know what I mean. I'm Altogether. What happens when military powers allow the drone itself to decide who is friend and who is foe, and then pull the trigger? Are we comfortable handing over life and death decisions to machines on the battlefield? That's that's the question. Like the answer is like complicated. It may seem like a, a paradox that on the battlefield we still have rules. Until now, those rules usually meant humans making decisions to attack an identified military target. But there's no consensus among countries about what to do about it. In 2020, according to a UN report, Libyan government forces deployed a Turkish-made Kargu-2 drone against an opposition group. This drone can identify a target and fire autonomously, but it's unclear if the drone itself called the shots. And so the fact that no one can agree on that just exposes the uh, porosity of this line between fully autonomous and semi-autonomous and with life and death in the hands of AI. I mean, even if something is autonomous and they're, quote, making decisions on their own, which is kind of misleading, I think, uh, a machine can't think on its own, right? It can only do what is programmed of it. And so in the end, even if it's technically making life and death decisions without a person right there, I mean, they still have to follow the code and everything that was put in them, right? Right. What right. if that same technology fails? The risk that AI-enabled autonomous systems might target the wrong forces and cause civilian casualties or even attack uh, enemy forces, but at the wrong time and place, escalating a conflict Ooh. or sparking okay. a conflict. Okay, okay, good point. Nope, 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 nope. What if a nuclear power, oh God. Uh, is a serious concern and one that nation states need to take seriously. And AI's ability to recognize faces and objects is still very much a work in progress. Computer algorithms can be confused by changing weather patterns or similarly shaped objects. This has turned out to be a problem with some self-driving cars. Between July 2021 and May 22, nearly 400 car crashes in the US were attributed to partially automated driver assist systems. Some fear the same could happen with armed drones. Without international consensus on how to control and regulate autonomous weapons, many see AI warfare as inevitable. Countries are discussing the issues but the technology is certainly moving forward at a faster pace than diplomacy. We're either sort of past the point of no return, um, or we're at this point where it's so important that we need to be careful, especially careful now, with ensuring that there are norms about uh, prohibiting the autonomous targeting uh, of these munitions. The UN Secretary General called for a total ban on lethal autonomous weapons, as have international human rights organizations. The public's fear in this area, A, it's legit. It's something that the society should be questioning and asking these questions. That's natural, that's expected, and there's, that. Not, I don't see anything wrong with that. AeroVironment CEO grew up in Afghanistan and knows all about Russian aggression. I also saw war, I saw people die. He was a teenager when his family was forced to flee the Soviet invasion. So I and then... lived and experienced exactly the kind of things that the Ukrainians are experiencing today. 
The war in Ukraine continues to push the boundaries of the rules of engagement. There seems to be little concern for civilian casualties. But what's worse, the cruelty of man or the fallibility of machines? Cruelty of man? Was that a... Was that a... Rhetorical... Really cool video. I, I paused a lot there, but I had a lot of questions, and this interests me. I love it if you can answer those questions, guys. Those questions in the comments. Love to see you over on the Discord if you'd like, or in the Minecraft stuff that interests you. See you guys next time. Chin up. Remember, trust me. Chin up. See you guys.